Hello students, welcome to lecture 10 of the online course on Photonic Crystals, Fundamentals and Applications. Today's lecture, we will cover the fundamentals of 1D Photonic Crystals. So here is the lecture outline, we will have a quick recap of the Photonic Crystals, the overview. We will discuss Photonic Crystals as semiconductors of light. We will also draw the analogy between Photonic Crystals and Solid State Physics. We will discuss about the timeline of photonic crystals, we will provide overview of block waves and then go into details of 1D photonic crystals and take some examples like the multilayer film, their block modes and dispersion relation. So, in the context of this uh, lecture, these two gentlemen have made significant contribution that is the picture of Felix block. So, he developed a theory that describes electron waves in the periodic structure of solids and the same theory has also been applied for photonic crystals where we study about light propagation in periodic structure of dielectrics. And this is the picture of Eli Avlanovich. So, he co-invented the concept of photonic band gap along, along with uh, as John and uh, he made the first photonic band gap crystal. So, his contribution to the field of photonic crystal is really enormous. So, look into the first topic which is a quick recap. So, a photonic crystal is basically a material that has been structured to process a periodic modulation of the refractive index. So, that the structure influences the propagation as well as confinement of light within it. So, the picture here shows the multilayer film which is basically a one dimensional photonic crystal. So, you can see the green and the blue uh, material they are basically two different types of material and they have been repeated periodically along the z direction ok and here a marks the period of this periodicity of the structure right. So, photonic crystals are periodic optical structures that are designed to affect the motion of photons in a similar way that periodicity of a semiconductor crystal affects the motion of electrons. So, there is a direct analogy between you know semiconductor physics and the photonic crystals. So, photonic crystals are also sometimes called you know semiconductor crystals for light. So, as you understand the periodicity can be in um, one dimension, two dimension or three dimension and you know that way the photonic crystals are also called one dimensional, two dimensional or three dimensional photonic crystals. So, in fact, you know you can actually make quite complicated structures like these ok and they possess very interesting optical properties. So, this we have already seen. Okay, always remember the different colors they represent materials with different dielectric constant. So, 1D it is very clear that you just have the periodicity in one dimension ok the material is uniform in the other two dimension. When you go for you now 2D photonic crystals what you see you basically have you know columns ok of two different materials which are repeated along the two dimension. And here you can think of you have small cubes of different materials which are periodically repeated in all three axes or all three dimensions. So, now let us have a quick overview of the photonic crystal. So, let us start with 1D you know periodic structure that include stacks of identical parallel planar multilayer segments something like this. So, these are often used as gratings that could reflect optical waves at certain angles and also as filters that can selectively reflect certain frequencies. So, you can see that if you consider the bright region to have uh, refractive index n 1 and the dark region to have refractive index n 2, the profile the refractive index profile shows you that n 1 is lower than n 2 and that is typically the convention. So, the target material has a uh, higher dielectric constant and you can measure the periodicity 
like this you know from this point to this point so that is given as capital lambda so that is the periodicity along z direction along x and y direction the material is homogeneous you can go for 2d 2d photonic crystals okay they look like this as you have seen so they basically in uh, include parallel rods as i have already discussed so you can actually have parallel rods or you can have parallel cylindrical holes okay and this kind of cylindrical holes are important to modify the characteristics of optical fibers as we have discussed in the initial lectures and those are called holy fibers right you can also think of you know three dimensional structures where you can have arrays of cubes spheres or even holes of different shapes which are organized in lattice structures which which are very similar to those found in the natural crystals so when we go into more details we'll see those exact orientation but you can think of all the possibilities of different unit cell structures that could repeat in three dimension okay to form a 3d photonic crystal you can think of arrangements in two dimension to form 2d photonic crystals so we come back to our study and our objective today so we are uh, mainly focusing on the 1d photonic crystal in this particular lecture so here you can notice that we are having periodic variation in the refractive index okay and it is uh, assumed that this kind of you know variation will extend indefinitely like so infinitely long periodic array but when you think in practice practice you want to make this device you will see that these devices or these photonic crystals they have finite size it means you only can have you know certain fixed number of layers so as in normal crystals the periodic structure okay in this all in this figure also have a unit cell here here you can identify this dark and the bright region or layer as one unit cell and that is basically getting repeated periodically right so this unit cell once repeated can give you the whole crystal structure so as discussed in 1d photonic crystal this two adjacent layer give you the photonic crystal and you can move along that direction that is the grating vector you can say okay and here the periodicity is given by this capital lambda okay so it is called the period of the periodicity okay and you can generate the whole 1d photonic crystal once you repeat this unit cell using this period in this particular z dimension fine now let's look into the concept where you know photonic crystals are considered to be semiconductors of light so optical waves which are inherently periodic interact with uh, periodic media in a unique way particularly when the scale of the periodicity becomes comparable to that of the wavelength of light and if you remember the initial lecture where we discussed about the differences between uh, optics photonics and uh, nanophotonics we discussed that photonics is that particular science branch of optics you can say where we are talking about materials which are having dimensions of the order of the wavelength of light and this is where exactly photonic crystal comes into the picture the so photonic crystal has got periodicity which is comparable to the wavelength of light so here what happens you know some spectral bands will emerge where light waves cannot propagate through this medium at all okay that means the propagation has got severe attenuation okay and the waves with frequencies lying within those forbidden bands are called photonic band gap and they behave in a manner which is very similar to that of total internal reflection but difference is that photonic band gap is applicable for all directions means the light can have any incident angle but still it will be completely reflected but when you compare uh, photonic crystals uh, it is uh, when you compare this with total internal reflection where the reflection only takes place for a particular set of incident angle 
for you know the light wave so the dissolution of the transmitted wave is a result of the destructive interference among the waves scattered by the elements of the periodic structure in the forward direction so this effect basically extends over finite spectral bands rather than just occurring for single frequencies now this phenomena is analogous to the electronic properties of crystalline solids such as semiconductors so in that case the periodic wave associated with an electron travels in a periodic crystal lattice and energy band gap often materialize so if you put semiconductors and uh, photonic crystals side by side you can say the semiconductors are basically periodic array of atoms whereas photonic crystals are basically periodic variation of dielectric constant so you can have this variation along one dimension two dimension or three dimension the length scale for semiconductors are basically atomic length length scale that means you know you are talking in terms of armstrong okay when you come to photonic crystal you are basically having length scale which is comparable to lambda and lambda for visible light is typically from 400 nanometer to you know 780 nanometer so you are typically in those micrometer kind of length scale semiconductors are natural structures whether whereas you know photonic crystals are artificial structures semiconductors control the flow of electron whereas photonic crystal controls the propagation of electromagnetic wave or light and uh, semiconductors have caused this 1950s electronic revolution whereas photonic crystals are bringing up lot new more frontiers in modern optics and as i mentioned in the initial lectures that even in the emergence of 6g um, technologies photonic crystal is going to play a very very important role in terms of you know terahertz topological photonic insulators based devices okay so because of this analogy you can say that the photonic periodic structures have come to be called as photonic crystals right and photonic crystals enjoy a whole raft of applications they can be used as waveguides filters resonators lasers you know fibers routers switches gates sensors etc so you can think of you know making any kind of you know optical communication system using photonic crystal so that way photonic crystal is a very very handy uh, concept and it is a very handy tool for the optical engineers now let's put a comparison between the photonic crystals and the solid state physics okay the similarity between the physics of uh, photonic crystals and solid state physics gives us the possibility to draw the analogy between some properties and computation method which are applied in you know solid state and photon crystal physics the most important similarities are something like you know periodic modulation of refractive index in photonic crystal forms a lattice which is similar to the atomic lattice of solid state the behavior of photons in a photonic crystal is similar to electron and hole behavior in atomic lattice and due to the lattice periodicity both photonic crystal and solid state provide band gap and these are the range of frequencies that particle or photonic crystal will not allow inside that structure so from the theoretical point of view determination of the eigen functions in a photonic crystal is very similar to the calculation of you know particle wave functions in the solid state so this similarity is used to obtain the photonic band structure so the method that you follow to calculate um, electronic band structure in um, semiconductors you can actually use the same thing same concept here to obtain the photonic band structure for photonic crystals but there are some essential differences as well between photonic crystals and solid state physics so one main difference is the particle energy distribution so electrons in 
semiconductors or solid state physics they obey the Fermi Dirac distribution while photons obey Bose Einstein distribution. Now Bose Einstein statistics basically apply only to particles that do not follow the Pauli's exclusion principle, right? So particles that follow Bose Einstein statistics are called bosons which have integer number of integer value of spin, okay? But in contrast particles that follow Fermi Dirac statistics are called fermions and they have half integer spins, right? Besides electrons in uh, solid state physics are affected by the intracrystalline field which leads to the necessity of taking into account, right? While photons are not affected by that intracrystalline field. The most important property which determines the significant practical significance of the photonic crystals is basically the presence of the photonic band gap. So photonic band gap engineering is really an art that optical engineers master by changing the you know p constituent unit cells and the periodicity to match their requirement. Now why that is particularly important? The photonic band gap refers to the energy or the frequency range where the light propagation is prohibited inside the photonic crystal. So when the radiation with frequency inside the photonic band gap incident on the structure, it appears to be completely reflected. So let us have a brief look at the photonic crystal timeline. We have briefly seen this in the introductory lecture, but let us have a quick uh, overview again. So, in 1987, the predictions of photonic crystals were made, okay, and this were done by Sajib John and Eli uh, Evlenovich, and they have written these papers on, you know, strong localization of photons in certain dielectric super lattices and also inhibited. Um, spontaneous emission in solid state physics and electronics. So after that in 1990 the computational demonstration of photonic crystal was done by K. M. Ho. In 1991 Avlonopich demonstrated experimentally the first microwave photonic crystal. Okay, if you remember we have studied the scaling properties of electronic electromagnetism and that is why you know it was possible to demonstrate the properties for you know microwave photonic crystals in instead of making you know photonic crystals for light. So in 1995 large scale 2D photonic crystals were made invisible. So this is where the technology for you know uh, photonic crystals which handle light was developed. And then in 1998, a 3D photonic crystal was designed to operate at infrared wavelength. In 1998, Philip Russell at the University of Bath, England demonstrated photonic band gap filters, sorry, fibers, photonic band gap fibers. So this is the historic timeline of photonic crystal research. And after that, slowly the photonic crystal research has gained momentum. So let us now go into the details of 1D photonic crystals. So let us analyze the photonic crystals by considering the simplest case which is the one dimensional periodicity and we apply the principles of electromagnetism and symmetry that we have developed in the previous lectures. So even in this simple system we can discern some of the important features of photonic crystal in general something like the photonic band gap and the modes that are localized around defects. So the optical properties of a one dimensional layered system may be familiar by but by expressing the results in the language of band structures and band gaps okay a new phenomena such as omnidirectional reflectivity can be discovered okay and this is where you know the concept of 1D photonic crystal is in important. So what you are getting is omnidirectional reflectivity, not only reflectivity at certain angle. So although you know you have this concept of 
you know layered systems okay you are actually focusing on the photonic band gap and band structure to obtain this omnidirectional feature and 1d photonic crystal is the easiest one to study as you go on more complicated systems like 2d or 3d photonic crystals same concept will be applied but things will get more complicated so the simplest possible photonic crystal can be thought of as an alternating layer of materials of different dielectric constants something like a multi-layer film as you see in this particular figure so here if you think the permittivity along x and y a same remains constant but then permittivity along z is basically changing along z right so epsilon z is changing periodically so the system consists of alternating layers of materials blue and green which have different dielectric constant and the spatial period is marked as a so if you can consider two layers as the unit cell so this is the periodicity a which is basically the total thickness of these two layers now we consider each layer is uniform and it extends to infinity along the lateral dimensions that is along x and y and the periodicity in the z direction also extends to infinity so these are needed for the theoretical the theoretical calculation but if you think in practice if you want to make a device you will have finite dimensions along x and y and also along z now this arrangement is not a new idea lord rayleigh published one of the first analysis of the optical properties of multilayer film right so that was pretty you know in 1800s so as we will as we will see this type of photonic crystal can act as a mirror also known as black mirror for light with a frequency within a spe specific range and it can localize light modes if there are any defects in the structure so these concepts are commonly used in dielectric mirrors and optical filters so as you can see here what is happening you have a high and a low dielectric material of thickness d1 and d2 respectively and then this pattern is repeated over here so you say n equals 1 here the first period this is the second period the refractive index is marked as n1 n2 outside it is air and then you have this infinitely long you know, periodic structure and then finally you have a substrate supporting the structure so when there is an incident light you see some part is getting reflected you can call that as a some part getting transmitted but again some part of that transmitted light when it hits this particular interface between uh, this high and low medium a portion of it will get reflected and the remaining gets transmitted and then you will have this repeated reflection transmission and then and finally you get one reflection so this continues so what happens you are basically getting reflected light from all those different interfaces now if all these reflected light are in phase and then they do a constructive interference you basically see a reflection right so that behaves like a dielectric mirror but now if you change the width of the of each layer or the periodicity in such a way that all this reflected light destructively interfere with each other and they cancel out it means you will not see any reflection or you may see reflection at a particular frequency and remaining light is getting transmitted so that behaves like a filter so we, you will have a notch kind of a filter where only a particular frequency is reflected remaining is getting transmitted so that is how you can use the periodic structures as dielectric mirrors and optical filters so the traditional way to analyze the system as i mentioned you have to consider you know the sum of multiple reflections and refraction that occur at each of these interfaces okay but when you 
try to analyze the bench structure for you know more complicated uh, photonic crystals like 2D and 3D you have to use a slightly different approach. So, we will try to generalize that approach and uh, show it using block waves in uh, 1D photonic crystal first. So, the periodicity of a photonic crystal implies that any property at a location z will be same as that z plus minus lambda location or even z plus minus, plus minus 2 lambda or z plus minus 3 lambda and so on. So, it means there is a translational symmetry along the z direction that is along 1D. Okay. Now, the EM waves that are allowed to propagate along z through this photonic structure are called the modes of the photonic crystal. Right. So, the ones which are allowed to propagate are basically the solution okay, of electromagnetic waves in this particular system. So, that is why they are also called the modes of the photonic crystal. So, you can write that the permittivity is varying as this that epsilon z plus lambda is basically epsilon z. It means the permittivity is repeating periodically where lambda capital lambda is the period. So, they have a special waveform, they must bear the periodicity of the structure and are called block waves. Okay. So, such a wave for the electric field E x has a form of E x z t. Okay. So, E along x and it is propagating along z and it is also a function of t has got a z which is basically an amplitude function that contains the information of the periodicity of the structure. Okay. That is a z will also be periodic, the amplitude will have the periodicity of period lambda and it propagates along z. So, a z varies with the periodic refractive index which is n z. So, this refractive index is obtained from the dielectric constant which you have seen in the previous slide and if you remember the relationship that the refractive index is nothing but square root of the dielectric constant or epsilon. So, you can also write that a z plus lambda is equal to a z. So, this is how you know if you consider a field okay, getting part of by the object. So, wherever the wave front is entering the material, so any material will have refractive index more than 1 that means light basically slows down inside the material as compared to the light that is traveling in the air. So, your wave front will get actually distorted like this. So, this is how you can actually get the impression of that dielectric material which is present in the path of the light. Okay? Now, if you consider field in a periodic structure like this. So, this is how the dielectric material are arranged periodically and when a you know light with you know face front going like this, you can actually see that the amplitude also acquires that periodicity. Right? So, that was the concept that we discussed earlier that a z plus lambda will be equal to a z. So, the waves in periodic structures take on the symmetry and periodicity as their host material. So, if you think of you know periodic crystal there if you incident light beam, so the light will also you know take on the same kind of symmetry and periodicity in the amplitude as it is there in the host photonic crystal. So, 1D photonic crystals are basically structures as you have seen that the properties are constant in uh, orthogonal dimension and only it is changing in one direction. So, we will consider first a homogeneous system which is invariant to the arbitrary translation of the coordinate system. 
So for this medium an optical mode is basically a wave that is unaltered by such a translation. So it only changes by a multiplicative constant of uh, unity magnitude which is the phase factor. So if you consider plane wave which is exponential minus j kz is such a mode since upon translation by a distance of d it becomes exponential minus j z plus d. So when you split this exponential into the two terms you get exponential minus j k d times exponential minus j k z. So you are basically getting you know this phase factor exponential minus j k d as eigenvalue of the translation operation. So we can consider the on axis block mode okay, where in this photonic 1D photonic crystal or 1D periodic medium you could see that this block mode is invariant to the translation by distance lambda along the axis of the periodicity. So its optical modes are basically waves that could maintain their form upon the translation and it is changing only by a phase factor which is given as exponential minus j k d. Okay? So you can write that these modes have this particular form. So u z can be written as p k z exponential minus j capital K z. So what is u? u is basically any field component it can be h x, e x, e y, h x or h y. So it is a very generic term it is showing any field electric or magnetic field any component along x or y in this case. What is capital K? This is a propagation constant and p k z is basically a periodic function of period capital lambda. So this form satisfies the condition that a translation capital lambda alters the wave by a phase factor which is given by exponential minus j k lambda since the periodic function is unaltered by this translation. So this kind of optical wave is known as block mode the parameter k capital K which is denoted as the propagation constant or basically the wave vector or wave number in a periodic medium okay? and it is specified it specifies the mode and the associated periodic function which is pkz. So this parameter k capital K is called the block wave number. So once again what is the difference between this small k? Small k is the wave vector of the incident light and capital K is basically the wave number or wave vector you can say of the wave in a periodic medium. So the block mode is thus nothing but a plane wave which is exponential minus j k z with a propagation constant capital K modulated by a periodic function p k z. So which has the character of a standing wave. So if this is the way you know the traveling wave is. So the standing wave pattern is the dotted line and you can actually find that this is the period. So since a periodic function of period capital lambda can be expanded into a Fourier series as a superposition of harmonic functions of the form of exponential minus j m g z where m is nothing but you know 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and you can take small g as the spatial frequency right. So small g can be written as 2 pi by lambda. So small g is the spatial frequency okay, and it is a measure how often the sinusoidal components as determined by the Fourier transform. Okay. So the sinusoidal constants or components of the structure 
repeat per unit distance. So, that is G. So, it follows that the block wave is basically superposition of plane waves of multiple spatial frequencies like K plus Mg. So, here you can see this is a block mode. Okay. So, here you can see the spatial spectrum of the block mode. So, it has got one frequency k okay, and you have k plus g and k minus g, k plus 2g, k minus 2g and so on. Okay. So, the fundamental spatial frequency small g of the periodic structure and its harmonics mg added to the block wave number k they constitute the spatial spectrum of the block wave which is shown here. What is m? m is 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so on. right? So, the spatial frequency shift which is introduced by the periodic medium. So, the shift is here. right? So, this is analogous to the temporal shift or, or temporal frequency shift like Doppler. Okay? that is introduced by reflection from a moving object. So, if you take two modes with block numbers k and k prime, where k prime is given as k plus g, they are basically you know equivalent since they correspond to the same phase factor. So, if you find out the phase factor associated with this uh, block wave number, exponential minus j k prime lambda this can be written as k prime can be written as k plus g so you can write it like this so this essentially gives you 1 so you finally get exponential minus j k lambda okay g if you remember g is coming from here 2 pi by lambda so that is how this particular term gets into picture right so instead of g you are you are writing 2 pi okay so g lambda instead of g lambda you are writing 2 pi so this is evident that uh, since the factor exponential minus uh, j g z is itself periodic and it can be lumped with the periodic function p k z right so therefore for a complete specification of all the modes we only need to consider the values of capital K in a special frequency interval of width g equals 2 pi by e lambda. So, ideally the interval is starting from minus g by 2 to g by 2. So, that is from minus pi by lambda to pi by lambda. So, if you only consider this interval that can give you all information because after that it's it's repeating periodically so this region is also known as the first brilliant zone right and is a commonly used construct when you study the dispersion relation so now that we have established the mathematical form of the modes as imposed by the translational symmetry of the periodic medium the next step is basically to solve for eigenvalue problems which are described by the generalized Helmholtz equation right so it's basically the wave equation right so we have to find solutions for wave equation in this particular photonic crystal so those are the modes and those modes have their frequencies and only those frequencies are allowed to propagate inside the crystal where there is no solution it means that frequency falls within the band gap okay so, for a mode with a block wave number k, the eigenvalues provide a discrete set of frequencies omega and these values are used to construct the omega k dispersion relation and this is a dispersion relation as you can see the y axis is basically omega and what you have in the x axis is k. So, it is omega k dispersion diagram. You can also see that you have plotted it for you know g equals 2 pi by lambda. So, you are considering g by 2 to minus g by 2 to g by 2 okay? and then you are you know the structure is repeating for integral multiples of g by 2. The eigenfunctions 
So, this figure here shows the dispersion relation uh, as a multi-valued periodic function with period g equals t pi by lambda and uh, discontinuities at different k values. Okay? So, you are seeing discontinuities here, you are seeing discontinuities here which are basically integral multiple of uh, g by 2. So, here it is in g by 2 into 1 here it is 2 into g by 2 so that is so that's, uh, g. So, you are actually getting discontinuities at all these points. So, the Eisgen functions help us determine the block periodic function which is p k z for each values of omega associated with each k. So, this diagram is particularly very very interesting and you are only bothered about the Brillouin zone basically because that contains all the information okay and you can have brilliant zone ranging from minus g by 2 to g by 2 as we have described earlier so here also you can see that this region is marked at brilliant zone and what is happening next is basically an extension of it okay so when visualized as a monotonically increasing function of k like this Okay, you see that there is some discrete jump okay, at the values where k is basically uh, integral multiple of g by 2. Okay. So, these jumps or discontinuities basically correspond to the band gap. So, this is band gap 1, this is band gap 2. Okay. It means spectral bands are not crossed by the dispersion lines. Okay in this case. So, you do not have any propagation mode existing at those particular frequencies which lie within the band gap. So, the origin of discontinuities in the dispersion relation basically lies in the special symmetry that emerges when k equals g by 2. That is when the period of the medium equals exactly half the period of the traveling wave. So, consider two modes with k equals plus minus g by 2 and block periodic function p k z then can be written as p plus minus g by 2 okay, z. So, you are replacing k which is the wave number of the propagating mode with g by 2. So, this, since these modes travel with the same wave number, but they are traveling in the opposite direction. So, you can actually see the inverted version of the medium. Okay? So, what you are basically seeing is p minus g by 2 z will give you p g by 2 minus z. Right? So, they are basically inverted version of each other. Okay? But, these two modes are basically in fact, one mode and they are same because they have the same block numbers which are different by g. So, for every g you get this, the same modes because g is your spatial frequency. So, it therefore follows that at the edge of the brilliant zone which is here and here, there are two block periodic functions that are inverted version of one another. So, you can see at the edges. Okay. Since the medium is inhomogeneous or you can say piecewise homogeneous within a unit cell, these two distinct functions they interact with the medium differently and therefore, they have two different or distinct eigenvalues. That means, they will have different values of omega. So, one is having say this value of omega, the other one is having this value of omega. So, they are not having the same frequency although they have the same k value and this actually explains why you have got this discontinuity in the omega k line across the boundary of the brilliant zone. A similar argument could also explain the discontinuities that occur when k equals the other integer multiples of g by 2. So, you can also use the same argument here and so on.
So if you simply compare the dispersion relation of photon in vacuum which is given by you know this is the omega k diagram. So the dispersion relation is very simple it is given by omega equals ck. In periodic dielectric or photonic crystal you can see that the omega k diagram is basically follow a straight line but there are discontinuities in between and these are those photonic band gaps. So who is giving rise to these band gaps? There is this repeating periodic structure they are giving rise to this forbidden zone. So this particular bands or frequencies are not allowed to propagate inside the crystal. The band gap size dependent primarily on the difference in dielectric constant frequency dependent primarily on the cell size. So, the difference in the two material that you are using to construct the periodic crystal that actually has a role in deciding the gap, the band gap size and also the frequency dependent primarily on the cell size. So, you can look for high contrast alternative dielectric material that can give you wider band gap ok. So, here you can see you know you are basically getting a complete band gap it means the gap covers all the phases or all the values of k. So, that also tells you one interesting thing that if a light of this frequency falls from any direction that is not going to enter the crystal rather it is going to get reflected. So, it is a omnidirectional reflection that is possible if the frequency lies within this particular band gap. So, one last time I will show you a pictorial representation of how waves behave inside a 1D photonic band gap crystal ok. So, PBG is photonic band gap ok. So, here you consider a wave incident on a 1D band gap material ok and you see that there is partial reflection coming from you know all the different interfaces and the when the reflected waves are in phase and they reinforce one another they basically combine with the incident wave and produce a standing wave and if you remember from your school days the standing wave does not propagate and it does not travel to the material right and this is how the frequency within the band gap does not propagate inside the material. Where else if the wavelength is not in the 1D photonic band gap what happens? The reflected waves that you get from all the different you know interfaces are basically out of phase and they cancel out each other. So, the incident light can freely propagate through this material only it is slightly attenuated because some part of it is reflect loss in the reflection which essentially cancel out each other but then the transmitted intensity will have slightly less intensity than the incident light because of the attenuation. So, with that we conclude this lecture. So, we will start about the discussion of analysis and engineering of 1D photonic crystal band structures in the next lecture. If you have got any queries or doubt regarding this lecture you can write an email to me at this particular email address mentioning MOOC and photonic crystal on the subject line. Thank you.